We'll call a meeting to order. <clears throat> 701. Good evening. Uh, Finance Committee meeting for the April 17th. The vendor is updated. You have the agenda. Um, we've got attendance, tenant, Steve and I. I will open it up for any public participation. Public participation, yes. Just identify yourself, please. Thank you. Hi, this is um, Eleanor Axelrod, 19 Sheffield Road. Um, <clears throat> and I apologize, I'm traveling. Will you be voting on the Conservation Commission budget tonight? I wasn't clear because there was no detail on the budget document, on the agenda. Yes, so uh, this evening we'll, we will be voting on all the budgets that we've been presented. So yes, all of the budgets will be uh, voted on this evening. Is there any reason why um, these budgets aren't listed out like the last week's meeting? Yes, so uh, what happens is every meeting, someone presents a budget to us. So it varies by meeting who's there presenting that particular day or evening. And then at the end of the cycle, meaning a night like tonight, we will uh, re-bring up, or bring up again, I'm, I should say, each individual, well, a group or individual budgets and then vote on them. So we'll be voting on every budget for the town meeting that we've seen uh, through the process to get to this point. Okay, um, so so I'll, I'll give my comments. Um, yep. I guess I, I'm Good calling time. in to, to support an increase of the budget to the Conservation Commission role. I'm a little concerned it's not on the agenda because it means the people who have requested the increase, the Conservation Commission, are not here to attend and explain their ask. So I'm puzzled why, um, you know, during this process, all the new ads to staff um, and additional hours, in my opinion, as a, as a voter and a constituent in Wakefield, I think they should be treated equally and to the same process. Um, so there's that. And then there's the need. Unfortunately, um, Rebecca was 19 hours. She was very efficient, um, but she was very focused on uh, really only, as far as I could tell, doing permits, which meant a gap in education to the, like a lot of other stuff that conservation commissions do in other towns was not happening. An education component, overseeing our public resources like the lake um, uh, and coordinating volunteers and most important enforcement. And enforcement actually has, uh, is really important because if it's not done, the economic impact of, of um, contaminated wetlands is significant. Um, and so that can't be underestimated. Um, so I, I think you, you have to look at benchmarking this role against other towns and ask ourselves in Wakefield why we only have, you know, a part-time person when other people are full-time, um, why we're shifting responsibilities potentially to DPW and other resources that could be more expensive. Um, I think for somebody with two degrees, honestly speaking as a finance person, um, she was a steal. There's nobody else in town that has uh, conservation biology or wetlands um, experience. Um, this is the conservation agent role is not something that can be covered really by other departments. It would be like sending a plumber to do an electrician inspection or having your radiologist do your heart surgery. It really makes no sense. So I'd really put it back to the committee to think about this. Um, and uh, just as a final sort of economic piece, um, you know, if you think about a property in Wakefield that's been contaminated, um, you know, the, the agent should be present to field calls for a prospective buyer and to re research that property to make sure they're not buying, you know, an issue. Um, and if you, you know, I, I think the only one I can think of in Wakefield is Butler Ave, which has costed the town 
millions of dollars. Um, so, so I'll just leave you with that. And I really encourage um, this group to think about um, supporting the additional ask. And I'm sorry, the rest of the Conservation Commission isn't there to make this ask, but I, I do think it's important to the town. Thank you. Thank you. And, else? and I will sign off. I'm so sorry. I'm on vacation on a college trip, so I apologize. And I will turn that over <laughs> to you. <laughs> Thank you. Good night. Yeah. Thank Appreciate you. Your input. All right. Bye. Any other public participation? Very good seeing none. Okay, so um, in Govenda, we have the list of uh, budgets that we've seen to be voted on. Um, typically, we do the budgets in groupings, I believe, correct? Correct. correct. And um, so the first group would be the uh, general government group. Uh, Joe, are you up for, uh, for reading and or making motions? I am. Appreciate it. All yours. For total general government. I move the sum of $2,982,070 with $2,977,570 from tax levy and $4,500 from available funds of the wetland filing fees. Second. So second by Dan. <clears throat> Discussion on that group of budgets. <clears throat> Excuse me. Now I'll, I'll raise the question since she had the did you have your hand up? Go ahead. I did. Since we had the good measure to like call in around it. Didn't the woman resign um, who was the conservation officer? And didn't that didn't we lose that person? And so this is just a plan to I think on a timing basis, she may have resigned after it was sort of decided it wasn't going to be a 40 hour job. Okay. Is that the way it went? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yes. The decision on that was yours? My presentation to the town council was to keep the um, positions as part-time. I forget, this, there were two part-time. Um, I felt that that was a nice to have, not a need to have in that department. And town council voted to, uh, town council voted on my recommendation. Okay. I just wanted to bring it up and refresh everybody's memory. Yep. Yeah, the dollar amount was, uh, 20,000, 25,000, 25, probably what it was, 25, 25, anybody else with a hand up, Don? Um, yeah, so the, the next opportunity for the Conservation Commission would be to do an amendment at the town meeting. Is that right? Is that correct? Okay, right. That would be not just for them. That could be for anybody. <laughs> Okay. I guarantee it'll be the, one of them. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So obviously, I think as everybody knows, right, if we vote this way, then uh, the budget book will show the same value that town council came to the conclusion of as we would, uh, plus we had a different number. Correct. And then if, if they wanted, or if anyone wanted, they could make a motion to, to change that. Any other discussion? All right, so the motion before you is the total uh, for general government. Total budget request is uh, 2.982070 with 4,500 from available funds and 2,977,570 coming from tax levy. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Is, there, is there anyone Aye. opposed? I'm gonna put that as unanimous, does that? Anybody come as opposed? Okay, thank you. It was unanimous, Stefan just came on. Um, since I'm not doing roll call, just be clear if you if you choose to vote, however you choose to vote, make sure your vote is counted, all right? Actually, the state law says it has to be. Yeah. Roll call? Roll call. Roll call. I can do that. If it, unless it's unanimous. Then you can skip it. Okay. Are we all good with that? Sure. Yeah. Okay, Stefan, welcome. Who else am I? I think Brian is not here. Brian right. Kusek. That's all that I'm missing. And Bill Boudou. Okay. Uh, 
Go ahead, Joe. Uh, total protection of persons and property. I move the sum of fifteen million six hundred eighty thousand four hundred twenty-two dollars out of tax levy. Second. Motion has been made by Joe. Second by Dan. <clears throat> Any discussion on the protections of persons and property? Very good. I will just say that uh, you know, looking at the budgets. Budgets are clearly higher than previous years uh, for a lot of reasons. There's been a lot of, uh, a lot of, we, you've had contract settlements, you've had changes in grants. Um, so that, these are kind of some of the bigger budgets along with the school budgets. Uh, I think we've got our challenges ahead of us this year. Uh, financially looks fine to me, but uh, we'll, have, we'll have to see how the future <laughs> <laughs> what was uh, a deficit spending of about 1.2 <laughs> is uh, what, I, what I recall, right? Plus Dan's uh, made, made some different numbers. Anyway, that's my comment. <laughs> just, I just want to yep. pipe in. I just want to echo Jim's comments. I think it's wonderful when the town goes for and obtains all these grants. But I think now we're seeing the flip side of that where all the grants are rolling off, but the headcount is sticky. And it's wonderful to have more services and more people, but now we're feeling the budgetary impacts of that. And I think it's gonna grow more and more unpleasant over the next few years. That's it. Great. Ditto. Ditto in the end. Thank you. Okay, the uh, motion, any other discussion? No other hands? Last I call. think you're, you're in for a tough three years, no matter what or we're in for a tough three years, no matter what we decide sort of after this going forward, and try, unless we reduce headcount, but because of the contractual obligations, we've sort of set ourselves up for a few years of deficit spending, but you know, to be fair, we've, we've built up this base. And, you know, I guess, what was it? Two years ago, you know, you had 9% inflation. If we have 9% inflation again, we're gonna be faced with the same problem because you can only go up two and a half and cost of living goes up 10. That's a problem. Okay. Thank you. All right, the motion before you is for uh, protection of persons and property, total budget sum of $15,680,422 from tax levy. Um, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Is there anyone opposed? No one is opposed. No roll call. Thank you, Dan, for making that clear. Next budgets, uh, Joe. For total human services, the sum of one million one hundred twenty-five thousand and sixty-nine dollars from tax levy. Second. Second by Dan. Any discussion? No yeah. discussion. One yep. thing. Uh, yep. Does this include the new HR per, uh, person? No, that's under um, benefits and administration. Oh, okay. All right. And this is the human services. So sorry, I'll raise my hand again. Yep. Go ahead. This is the they added money. What is this the one where we took away money from the veteran or reduced it to what we thought it was, and then did town council add back to it? Yeah. Is that what happened? Um, the veterans, the veterans budget is too high, but it's fine. Right. It's 25,000 more. They added 25,000. 20, I think. And in a sort yeah, of, we had dialogue about that when it was presented. Yeah. 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 It should be lower, but political theater takes center stage. Yeah, exactly. Right. Coming from someone that may uh, enhance the political <laughs> theater. <laughs> It'll be more of a comedy, though. <laughs> I'd even log in. <laughs> okay, the motion before you is for uh, human services, total budget amount $1,125,069, all from tax levy. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Very good. Joe? I move for total public works, the sum of $8,102,000. <clears throat> and 
with $7,991,318 in tax levy and $110,740 from available funds of the perpetual care, park trust funds, and the sale of cemetery lots. <clears throat> Seconded by Dan. Any discussion on the uh, DPW, total DPW, including snow and ice? No discussion. Motion before you then is for total public works, total amount uh, 8,102,058 with 110,740 coming from available funds and 7,991,318 coming from the tax levy. All those in favor? Aye. Anyone opposed? Pardon me? Yep. Unanimous again. Very good, Joe. Uh, I move the sum of seven million four hundred seventy thousand five hundred seventy dollars from the water re uh, water uh, receipts fund. Second. Seconded by Dan. Any discussion on the water enterprise? All those in favor of the water enterprise budget with uh, seven million four hundred seventy thousand five hundred seventy dollars, all coming from the uh, water receipts. Thank you. All in favor. Anyone opposed? Yeah, that's fine. You. Uh, I move the sum of nine million three hundred sixty-seven thousand two hundred four dollars from the sewer enterprise receipts funds. Second by Dan. Discussions on the sewer. Sewer enterprise budget total of uh, nine million three hundred sixty-seven thousand two hundred four dollars. With that amount coming from the sewer receipts. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Anyone opposed? Unanimous. Thank you. From Wakefield Public Schools, I move the sum of $52,434,699 with uh, $52,319,699 from available funds. And 115, I mean, from tax levy and 115,000 from available funds. Second. Second by Dan. Discussion on the schools. Uh, I mean, what's the uh, available funds? Bus, bus fees. Just sure. the bus fees, that's it? Yeah. yeah. Yep. It's been that way for 25 years. Yeah. 115,000 every year. <laughs> Um, Dan, you got a question? I, Comments? Yeah. Sorry. So I've been running the numbers. You guys have all seen the numbers, and they have the schools I'm talking about have been negligent in so many ways. They have over a thirty-seven million dollars, thirty-six million dollars in their revolving accounts, and I sent a, a sheet around to everybody regarding headcount and. Um, increases since 2018. Um, our total headcount from 18 to 24, excluding teachers, went from 431 up to 476, 45 uh, person increase. 90% um, of that is schools. They added um, a lot of people during COVID. Um, they didn't let any of them go when COVID went away. They just kept everybody on board. Aren't they super cheap? They're way cheaper. They, when you looked at that average salary, it was way, way lower. Okay, fine. So I'm just saying that- I'm, yeah. I'm just Go saying ahead. headcount. Go ahead, because continue. Their, their healthcare is the same, $19,000 per person. Doesn't matter what the salary is. It's, we saw the healthcare cost at 19 grand a piece from, you know- the, But they have to be over 20 hours, right? For, for health insurance? Yeah. Okay. We've seen a big increase there. They, they have most of our workers' comp costs. That really doesn't change very much. They have the Excuse me, salary. Just, sorry, you said 431 headcount in 18. 431 is now 470. It's, a, it's that same spreadsheet I sent a few weeks yeah, ago. I'm looking for it. I just don't have it in front of me. Go ahead. Okay. Thank you. So they had a large increase of people. Their pay um, went from... Uh, 5.5 million up to 9 million. This is excluding teachers. I, this is retirement information I got. Yeah. Right. The average increase in pay for the schools is 8.4% over that period versus everybody else is around five. 
So the headcount and the pay both went up much more than anybody else. So I'm going to offer an amendment because I don't want to see a $1.2 million deficit for 25. And I just found out today from Steve that my state income uh, receipts estimate is a little high. It might come in where I've got it, but right now the House and the governor's proposals are both lower than what I have right now by a hundred and some uh, thousand dollars. So we are looking at a deficit of 1.2 million for this year, 25. 1.4 million for 26, 2 million the rest of the way out. We run out of money by 34 in terms of cash. Our reserves will drop below 10%, which is you know our policy um, I'm going to show you get the right year. In 26, we'll be at 9.6% at the end of 26. In other words, just two years, we'll be below our policy based on the, these numbers. So for me, I find this completely untenable. Um, every time they tell us something, they do something else. Um, and I'm going to offer an amendment that we lower Joe's number by half a million dollars to a total of uh, 51934699 with 115000 from bus fees. Second. Second it. Who, who was the first second? Evan. Evan. I am. It, well, the, Evan, said, <laughs> Evan said it first, Joe, but okay. He's younger, oh, he's well, I'll fight Evan for it. <laughs> <laughs> so what is the uh, proposed number of the, the, the new... So it, Again, it'd be fifty one million nine thirty four six ninety nine hundred and fifteen thousand from bus fees, and then from tax levy it would be fifty one million eight nineteen six ninety nine. And somebody check my math. Looks good to me. Now, okay. But what I did further discussion is, on the uh, on the motion. Well, or the amendment. Um, Good. So, if Steve would be so kind to share a screen, I have a forecast of what this would mean going forward. I need to. Yep. I need to get on it and share a screen, and hopefully, hopefully this works. Uh, I'd love it when technology works. Can you folks see that at home? <laughs> or where you are? Yeah. Everybody's good? Okay. So um, what this did then was decrease the deficit from 1.2 million to 700,000, 719 and change to be more exact. And you can see it hovers around seven, 800,000 or thereabouts all the way out. Um, so we don't go into um, the whole quite so fast. And a lot of things could, I mean, for 700,000 going forward, I mean, who knows uh, what's gonna happen there. And um, for our free cash, um, we run from 10, nine, it just goes down really slowly. I mean, th those numbers going out in the future, just, they don't mean a lot. And what I do, oh, here. here it is. Then, then the, the reserves, uh, would be 11.11107102 and um, 97, you know, three years, four years out. So we would hover around the 10% range for at least three or four years. Um, to me, I'd rather have a little bit of room, wiggle room, if you will, for downtime, because one thing we haven't had for a number of years is snow and ice overdraft, right? We haven't had anything in snow and ice above the 850 for quite a long time. That could change. Um, so anyway, so I would rather have some a cushion and reducing the school budget, uh, half a million would give us that cushion. They would still receive an increase of 4.5%, I believe is the number. Let me go to education. Um, yeah, so they still get a 4.5%. 5% increase, which is still above what we 
asking them to do because our income is only going up 4%. So five and a half versus four and a half, um, to me is a significant difference and can really help us on the near term. Okay. Good for now. I'm good for now. Stefan, could you uh, minimize that for me oh. so I can see the people? I'm not all right. Oh, I, I can see him. Oh. Stefan's up. Um, uh, yeah, one thing I wanted to mention. I'd, I'd rather see the whole screen. Okay. This okay. comes up uh, every year uh, with, with the schools. It is difficult to get sort of the nitty gritty details out of the schools. Uh, I think again this year, uh, and please correct me if I'm wrong, but um, I didn't see anything provided to us for analysis um, okay. in a format that we could we could actually do analysis in. I don't think anything was provided to us in Excel uh, that we could kind of craft our own story around their budget request. Salaries. Well, we got, uh, just you got this, right? Uh, tell me if you didn't. You got the uh, Excel spreadsheets that were provided by the uh, by the school, by Christine. We also got the salary spreadsheet of, of all the people in the schools. So we had both of those uh, sa uh, Excel spreadsheets, Excel spreadsheets uh, right? Okay. Oh, sorry, I think that was the uh, the meeting I was, it was absent. Um, There's an email, I thought. Yeah, I, I would have, I, I provided it, just sorry, but I you, you, saw, you did get quite a bit of it in Excel, which is new and different from prior. Okay. Um, uh, one thing I wanted to note too, I think earlier on in the meeting, uh, someone had quoted a 9.5% inflation over the past uh, year or two, year or so. Yep. Yep. Um, and, and Dan, you just quoted a, a uh, an escalation of labor of only 8% or 8.5%, I think is what you quoted. I mean, effectively what you're asking the teachers to do is to do more for, for less or do the same at a minimum. Uh, for less money. I, I'm not sure that is a fair ask of our school teachers. <clears throat> uh, one thing also I wanted to note too is that um, um, there should be some, uh, I guess if there's areas where you want to try to save money, I don't understand why we haven't taken a look at overtime. Uh, there's a number of departments that have significant overtime, uh, perpetual overtime, um, and it has never decreased. And I'm speaking in particular of the fire department and the police department. And I'm sure there are savings there that we could benefit from, especially those folks, <clears throat> if I understand correctly, overtime is paid more than one X, those hours that are worked. Yeah, it'd be at least time and a half, possibly double time, sure. Yeah, so I mean, I guess um, is that <clears throat> is that not more a, a more valuable place for us to be having this discussion as opposed to someone getting one x, um, which I sh I'm sure um, teacher versus uh, police or firefighter teacher is getting uh, a lesser of a rate. Um, the other thing too is that I don't think what we're considering here is uh, the amount of uh, funding uh, that may be um, sent back by the end of this fiscal year. And just looking at the uh, like the snow and ice line, for instance, uh, we attribute um, 850 or appropriate 850K for that line every year. And uh, I'm, you know, I only took out my shovel maybe a couple times this year. So I'm not sure uh, we're fully utilizing that set of funds. Uh, I'm sure there'll be givebacks on that line too. Okay. Uh, that's it for me for now. Thank you. Ellie. So I just have two, I guess, clarifying questions. Dan, you said that there's 36 million available. Is oh, that? Three, um, three, three point six. Yeah. Oh, that's Revolve, different. Yeah. That's a different number. Revolving Much you different. say 36. Did but, I, 30, oh, yeah, I, was, I, was, I, was, I was looking at I don't think so. But I'm like, okay. Sorry. Okay, so even even at a lesser amount of 3.6, um, you know, I, I think this discussion, you know, last year was my first year, this is a discussion with the schools then, could they fund that $500,000 should that move forward with those funds? I think so, yeah. Okay. And then- I'd also, I'd also look at Ed, because Ed knows revolving accounts better than any of us, 
Okay. Um, and I, when I've talked to him in the past, he thought a lot of that money was available. The food service was not, but mm -hmm. I think a lot of the others is available. And, you know, Ed, jump in if I'm incorrect. Yeah, I mean, the only reason for surpluses is, is number one, we're overcharging the parents or they're not charging enough of general fund expenditures because in theory, revolving funds a cash, you know, revenue to pay expenses. So having these huge balances is a concern. Um, and I think, you know, we, we talked about that last year as well. Um, so, I mean, it's, you can, you can, you can look uh, in terms of certainly central admin costs of literally being charged. Uh, you know, you can literally charge some of the superintendent's time to these revolving funds, as well as the school business manager. And a whole host of other positions, and that's that's what you do with on these indirect cost basis. So, um, I'll give them credit for being a little bit more transparent this year. But the fact that you have these huge balances is certainly you know a concern. Yeah, I have another issue though. Uh, maybe uh, a hold on, hold on. <laughs> I'll, 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 uh, I'll, I'll, no, I'll, no worries. Um, the only other question is Dan on your forecast. Is this the assumption that, you know, if the 500s reduce, that they'd continue that level of spending at that reduced amount to keep that 10% or above for the next couple of years? The expectation would be that they would kind of spend at that percentage versus what they've submitted year over year, correct? That's correct. What what okay. I did uh, beyond um, 26, is I assume 27 at four and a half percent, 28, four percent, and four, four, four going out. Okay. So um, I've assumed that once we bring it down to a more reasonable level, it'll stay there. Okay. Okay, thanks. I'm good. Thank you. Dennis. Uh, just uh, like Christine said at the last meeting that uh, they haven't done their year end yet, which obviously, uh, there should be money in there for this five hundred thousand, uh, because they haven't used all their opera money, as far as I I understand. Uh, it, they're just carrying it forward, and they've got money in there still for settling teacher, well, contracts, two outstanding contracts still. So I believe they 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 have that cushion built in to be able to take care of this, and. Uh, Therefore, I'll go along with it. Thank you. Okay, thanks. Ed, you're up. <clears throat> um, and I joined the discussion late at the last meeting, so I didn't hear the full presentation from the school department. But uh, number one, has the teacher's contract been ratified? I have not heard. That nobody. I have not heard an affirmative on that. I, I heard it was supposed to be last week. Um, I doubt it's going to be this week because it's school vacation. I have not heard an affirmative. I think it's extraordinarily lengthy period of time. This is very strange to yes. me. Is, it, is there a possibility that they're going to be back at the table again? And, and that's a possibility. That's a concern or worry. Are there any other school contracts that are still open? And is there sufficient funds in this budget to fund them? Uh, I guess I, I would, I, uh, you know, like I said, I came in late for the last meeting. I couldn't ask that question. Okay. My understanding is that there are other school contracts that are open that our current um, agreements are expiring September 1st of 2024. So they will be back at the negotiating table. So it'll be, it will be in the next fiscal year. So right. that's- yeah, I, you know, But that's baked in um, in there, I would imagine. The smaller the smaller uh, units are, are you know, okay. rolling off unit A, and they are rolling to the smaller units at the subcommittee. They talked about that. Yeah. All right. Well, I'm hoping it is baked in, and that they that they hold their position on that, and not have anything above and beyond the uh, whatever they what they've baked in. So that was really my my questions. Thank you, uh, Joe. Yeah, just um, regarding uh, Stefan's comments about uh, the overtime in the fire department, for example, they have that minimum manning with the contractual. Uh, a collective bargaining agreement. So that's not something that we can actually uh, uh, deal with ourselves as a finance committee, uh, but we can deal with the school department's budget. And I think the fact that they have 3.6 million available uh, uh, revolving accounts, they'll be able to absorb this uh, um, amount. And uh, I, uh, 
as I'm concerned, as well as Dan has been about the number of employees uh, that we're uh, amping up here in a town uh, in comparison to other communities. Uh, we just, I, I, I asked Dan some of the, as far as other communities of similar size, such as Reading, we have maybe over uh, close to a uh, 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 hundred employees more. I, mean, I was surprised by that. I don't know where they are, but I think <laughs> we have to be very careful uh, from a financial point of view going into the, as I think as, uh, uh, as was stated, our next three years. So I think this is a good first step regarding that. Thank you. Um, Stefan, you already been up. Hold on, Doug. All right. So like Dan, I love this dance we do every year. And this is one thing if I do win, I won't miss. But <laughs> I think like I think some of what you're saying, like, look, the the numbers that you threw out. Again, I think people tend to look and and is rightfully the authority on the forecast and on the budget. But Dan presents things in a way that makes his side of the story. I think I also sent you all a piece of information talking about who, what, what people we did give raises to and what this headcount change amounted to. And overall, earnings growth Schools were 36 percent. DPW was 29. Town was 28. Police was 25. Fires 28. Libraries 34. So there's a big headcount change there. But the overall salary change, it's roughly in line with the, those other people. And the average, because Dan did it off pension earnings, which I think excludes the teachers, right? Yes, no teachers. Yeah. So that doesn't have any teachers there. The average earnings of these people in 2018 was $31,000. The average earnings of the people in 2024 was $43,000. Guess what? Their people making $31,000 generally aren't staying in the job 20 years to get their pension. So I don't think it's that big of a pension risk. I mean, there's, there's some calculation and some benefits that you approve, but not, not the crazy numbers that we would see in those other departments. These people are not lifetime employees who've been added by and large. So in terms of, you're absolutely like, correct on retirement. Their retirement cost for these people is probably zero because they're nine plus two contributors. They're young, they're short service. Retirement costs are zero. There really is zero for us retirement board. Where the cost comes in is there's basically the salary and health care. It's potentially health care. But a lot of these people are probably, you know, by the way, People who are making 31000 often aren't paying for, I don't know if the, the town doesn't pick up 100% of health care for those people, do, do they? No. 75, 75 or 80, depending on the plan they go So through. And yeah. so, like, my guess is the uptake on health care costs is not 100. Oh, the the average not, we heard was 19000 like For a family um, plan. Health, health for a, No, 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 I'm not saying that that's not the cost. I'm yeah. saying the number of people in these positions, because these are... These are the people who we just gave the huge raise to, who like the lunch workers who we gave like, didn't we give them like a 14 or a 20% raise because we were paying them pretty much nothing? Uh, for the paras. The paras. The paras. Yeah, we, so that's a lot of this. The paras are in this, I think. Yeah. Right? Yeah. 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 Thank you. So that's a lot of this. And then the other thing I'd push back on is Dan's got the forecasted numbers out. And by the way, I also said like, it looks like it's going to be a rough three years. That's right. One and a quarter. We can live with we can live with one and a quarter for a few years. Um, Dan also, Dan's spreadsheet from 2020 told us that 22, 23, and 24 were going to be, we're going to be spending a deficit of like 3.2, 3.3 million dollars. It ended up, it's ending up, it's going to be about a million bucks. And so let's not take like those numbers that he's forecasting out. They're not written on tablets, people. <laughs> well, no, they're not gospel. <laughs> so I think this this notion of us, and by the way, I understand why we, we harp in on the school budget. A, it's big, and B, it's the one that we don't have line item control over. And by the way, all of us kind of love having a little control over these things. So we don't love the idea of just giving them this blank check and then they get to spend it. And then we think they spend it stupidly sometimes. And, and by God, they do. Um, 
But I would say that for us to like, for us, and by the way, Joe, talking about the the minimum manning, that we can't do anything about that because we're contractually ob um, obliged. Well, the people in this room negotiated that contract. That That's fine. And on top of that, we are responsible for saying yes to those safer grants the last bunch of years. And I'm glad we have them. I'm glad we have the coverage. But we can't complain about the fact that it costs more now. We all voted for yes on the, the fire budget without batting an eye even though that grew by an extraordinary amount. Yeah, I mean, to, to your point, Doug, the, the, the fire department growth was 51 people to 56, and that increase of five over that period of 18 to 24. They cost a lot on retirement. Right, they do. And that's 10% of their force. And, and, and their the town pay, didn't grow by 10%. And their, and their pay is, what, 100,000, give or take. Don't, you know, let's not, you know. Yeah. So I still got to... I still got a week before I can speak fully on it. <laughs> you hope. <laughs> no, I can speak fully on it in a week. Oh, one way or the other. Way. Way. Yeah, yeah. Um, <clears throat> are you done? I'm done. Laurie? Everyone else saw that? Well, uh, Let the, Stefan had his second question. Yeah, uh, Stefan, can you hold uh, still? Because, uh, Don, I think you have not spoke yet. Yeah, I, I just want to follow up a little bit on what Doug said. You know, I, I think... You know, sometimes um, we kind of focus on taking uh, taking this out on the schools, but you know, if we look at the top hundred salaries in the in the town, I think the only one from the schools that's in that list is the superintendent. You know, it, it's not like the folks in the schools are making a ton of money. Um, you know, the you, you have these these folks with low salaries. Um, and, you know, I, I think, uh, hopefully the teacher's contract gets ratified, um, because, you know, I, I would hate to see us go through what some of the other towns have gone through with their teachers negotiations. So, um, you know, I, I think it's, uh, been a rough few years for the school, uh, coming back from COVID. Um, and I, I don't think now is the time to really um push them uh to to make significant cuts so are you i'll follow that up after sure. after all the people well, go, i have the other thing and you have it's small. still a four sure. and a half percent increase i uh, sorry it's a it's a reduction on the on the our recommendation correct on their recommendation uh, thank you glory and their recommendation was also approved by the council Town Council does not approve it. Town so. Council does not approve it. Town not council, school it. committee, school town committee town does. Town Council hears it, school committee approves it. Approves it, okay. Uh, Lori. I'm going to be Captain Obvious. Um, so I think the nuances about the salaries and the types of people in the different departments is a very valuable conversation. But let's not be remiss that 52 million the budget for the schools of the 107 from the tax levy, if we're going to say sometime in the next zero to three, five years, we will be tightening, state budgets will be tightening, and all of these budgets might have to tighten a little bit, I think to ask the schools who have $3.6 million of extra cash that they do have fluidity with, if I'm understanding that correctly, to ask them tighten to by 500 grand, which they will lose no positions, they will lose no curricula. They will. They are not losing anything. They're just using their cash differently, and it sends a message, maybe perhaps for those who are in support of it, that times may be tough and some things may be expected to be, be tightened up a bit. But you know, if you want to ask like the library not to hire an extra person or another department not to hire an extra person, um, then you best use your funds wisely, maybe perhaps on the biggest budget. Not I, That probably didn't come out correctly. I'm not saying the school department isn't using them wisely, but if they have the cash to be fluid and use them in a different way to cover this 500 grand, I'm kind of for it, or I'm for it. Captain Obvious, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I got it. Stefan, still. Stefan, uh, additional comments? All right, I have a comment too, but go ahead, Stefan. Yeah, I, I just wanted to, to, to make sure that I'm, I'm certainly aware of the uh, the minimum manning requirements for the fire department. Um, I'm also like aware of uh, 
you know, police uh, department safety. Um, you never want to see um, a police officer, you know, out on the street alone without help, um, especially when they need it. But I think uh, <clears throat> without suitable, a suitable, maybe long-term hiring strategy in those particular areas, we're going to continue to see a significant overtime in those areas. And I, I think it's I think it's safe to say that it's already we've as a town, we've engendered a dependence on that overtime for those particular departments. And um, I think there needs to be a long term strategy if we're trying to save money here to hire more heads so that we can meet our minimum standards and at a lower cost. <clears throat> Um, but one of the things that I wanted to mention too for the schools, and this, this does come up every year, um, I do mention this metric. Um, I think actually, um, I think Christine Bufagna actually mentioned this too, but um, Wakefield, um, our expenditures per pupil are right at the 50th percentile in, in the state of Massachusetts. Uh, so we can't say that we are spending an inordinate or an extreme amount of money here in the town of Wakefield, as it compares to any other town in, in, the, in the state. Um, <clears throat> so I just wanted to, to throw that out there. Thank you. Um, I'll, I'll make a couple of comments. Dennis, do you want Dennis? Dennis did, Dennis, did you already talk yet? Yes, yeah. I've already talked once, so it's your turn. Well, that's all right. You can, you can, if you have a point to make, go ahead. I'll try. Well, my, my point again is we're not hurting the school department until we know what their year-end figures are, which that no one can give us yet. Just like the other departments, we're expecting to get money back. Uh, they have that latitude in theirs to, to, uh, to hold it. We don't. So uh, we've asked, contributed last year, uh, and, and this is another way of asking to make sure we get unexpended money back, not just keep it as another kitty. And uh, this is what I'm concerned with. We don't, we don't get a true picture of everything back by the time we go to town meeting to, uh, to know where the true figures are. We will have figures from, for our free cash from Steve as to what the other budgets are, we can project and, uh, I think we ought to get that picture now so that we, we know where this 700000 that we're still short is going to come down just on the, the year in closure number. So uh, I don't think we're, we're that, that bad until we know what the, what, the, what the closeout numbers are. Thank you. That's it. Very good. So, so I, I had one, one thing to add. Yes, go ahead. If I could. Um, I had a contribution of $100,000 in the stabilization account. That's gone. So our stabilization um, contributions, we did 100000 in 23 and 22, and then we did blank for years. We put nothing in for a number of years. So um, we're not adding a stabilization in this budget the way things are set up right now. It's, it's a zero. And we should be putting money in a stabilization. We're not this year. Otherwise, it'd be worse. Okay. Um, I would say then uh, just a couple of things. So the, um, the subcommittee, uh, and I know it's one of those committees where you, you, you folks don't get write-ups from us. We meet uh, on a couple of occasions with them, and it's, it's really just not the same, and, and maybe I apologize for that, but. Well, it's part of their, they, we, we're part of their meeting, subcommittee meeting, so that. Yeah, it, and we've, uh, we've talked about structuring things differently, and Doug had, had done that this year for a couple of meetings. But the increase in the revolving account offset went up by half a million dollars from last year to this year. Uh, maybe a step in the right direction, maybe not enough. Uh, last year, the schools did return some uh, free cash Around four hundred thousand dollars, or three eighty, or something. Uh, one could argue where that came from, but they had money and they returned some, which they hadn't done in a while. They've got the ability to earmark money for future spending, which is also a good thing, depending upon how you look at it. Um, the other thing, uh, 
you know, Doug spoke about the, the Dan's uh, spreadsheet, and I find it almost invaluable to uh, to use. I, I need it. I, I, I use it. I like to understand it. And there's just uh, a ton of variables in there, as Dan knows, and others should know if you look at it and try to manipulate it. One such variable, for example, and, and again, this would just put more money into the overall. You know, when you look at local receipts, uh, last year local receipts was budgeted at 9.4 and committed 11.4. So that was a change to the positive about 1.9 million. Previous year, we had a change to the positive of about 900,000. Uh, not projected to say that those numbers are always gonna bring back a million dollars and offset maybe a deficit for a particular year. But the point is, there's many things in, in, the, in the spreadsheet as there should be, one of them being cash and one of them being uh, actual versus budgeted. And this is just local receipts. I Kevin gave me some numbers that I look back on a number of years. We put a budget in of X and we've had an actual of 114% uh, over that amount over the last uh, four years. So uh, anyway, that being said, you, you, you can see money come back, which I am not a proponent of just spending money because we have it. I don't want to misrepresent that. But when you look at the uh, spreadsheet, there's potential there. Do I think the schools uh, have a, too many people? We asked about that. Uh, I blame the state for a lot of things and I'll blame the state for some of this, uh, free lunch. So we get free breakfast now, we get free lunch and uh, they didn't have enough staff. That's how it was explained to me. That was how explained to uh, Doug if he was there or, uh, or Brian. So they needed additional bodies to uh, take care of the lunches. And clean up. Is there too many? Should there not be enough? You know, these are some of the questions and some of the answers we got. So thank you, you know, state government. It's, it's free, meaning everybody doesn't have to pay. Another unfunded mandate. It's an unfunded mandate that Frosts my arse. But uh, that being said, um, the other question I, I would pose is uh, the Chapter 70 money was potentially <laughs> going to go up in a particular budget that we saw a week or two ago, which was going to amount to about how much? Does anybody know? Additional state aid? Was it well, 800 grand, 600 grand? No, I wish it was. <laughs> $25 versus 130 It went up from that when the houses. And this is the, the per pupil right. part of the equation, the, right? Um, well, the, when the-, the You don't know. You, right, no, I, I know. When the governor filed, filed her budget, every community received a minimum of $30 per student for um, increase for uh, Chapter 70, okay? And then it goes into the House and it, and it stays there. I will tell you that the House's budget that just came out the other day um, they all touted how they did increase Chapter 70, and they increased Chapter 70 to, I think it was $104 per student, 104, which ended up an increase in Chapter 70 of $250,000. Oh, I, I just found it. $250,000, give or take. Okay. So another two. However. Yeah. Then there was take backs. Then, however. <laughs> I, I had to I had <laughs> What happens is... Um, the, the house on the house side decided to pay for part of that by restricting by reducing our unrestricted local aid and they um, and they reduced that by oh about a hundred thousand or so so they gave us a couple hundred thousand in this pocket and they took a hundred thousand yeah. dollars okay. out of this pocket you. so you really need to go through the cherry sheet you need to go to page two because they do stuff with charter school tuition so right. The net to us was, um, you know, uh, less than two hundred thousand, but it all shuffled out. It was less than two hundred thousand, which represents yeah. about one point five percent increase. Yeah, it's a small number. I, was, I, was I, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm not. A, I'm, I'm happy to get anything we get. Absolutely. But, um, it wasn't. Um, if yeah. it wasn't as we would have hoped. <laughs> Thank you. And I just think uh, the next few years is going to be difficult. The next few years after that could be very difficult, depending upon the revenue and the spending, obviously, pretty straightforward. But on the revenue side, uh, you know, we don't get the revenue. There'll be broader cuts, uh, I think, as, as time goes on. It just has to be. It, it just it isn't sustainable. You know, deficit spending. I didn't really come on this board to be a proponent of deficit spending. But from a spreadsheet perspective, uh, it, it has worked itself out 
for many cycles that I've been involved. When you say 114, is that that percent is is that off of Kevin's number or my number? Uh, I took local receipts from Kevin's information that he provides, which is the total local receipts. So, like for uh, FY24, it was 10.1 million was the uh, budgeted amount. Kevin's number, I believe. Right? You gave it to me. That, yeah, that's that was the actual. Uh, I don't have an actual yet for FY24. Yeah, we're close to year out. Oh, no. That, okay. 24. Not 24. I was thinking 24. 24 budgeted was 10.1 million. My actual for 23 is 9.1 million. What's what, what are we missing here? The, the, there were different components. Uh, okay, components. That makes sense. I don't have the breakdown with me, but that would be black size. Yeah, it, no motel. All of it, all local receipts rolled up. Investment income. Yep. yep. There's water and sewer can mess things up. Yeah, it wouldn't be water and sewer. So, um, can I also talk about the anyway? Just one more time. Sorry. Any, I'm done. Thank you. Sorry. <laughs> Go ahead. <laughs> just in terms of the amendment um, and I made the what the schools have done. Provided. So, look, the schools this year didn't add a body gave us more information than they ever had, gave it to us in a format that like we like, gave us back money out of the revolvers, maybe not as much as we want, but more than we'd gotten in the past. And again, this sort of gets to, you know, previous members of this committee have like had huge issues if they're sitting on the school's subcommittee, which a relatively thankless task, but <clears throat> to get them to sort of come on board with the changes that we request and then to like roll up the newspaper and say, you know what, we want $500,000 back from you guys. We don't have a great reason for it other than we think you have too much slush money over there, but it's not slush money that's not going to anything. It is going to fund all those things. It's not, you know, it isn't, it isn't just out there. It's not being held back to like pay for 14% teacher raises. Uh, so I think, They've behaved particularly well this year. The, the school, especially, especially Christine and Doug, I mean, and the, the school committee has been uh, good to us, keeping us sort of in the loop with where they were with negotiations, but obviously they can't give us much. And also, you know, I don't think we ever think of... Um, Look, the, the teachers union negotiates 4,000 contracts a, a year. We negotiate one every three years. Who do you think is better at? Um, so therein lies the rub. Um, so by the way, we can take the 500,000. It's not going to change what st schedule A gets. What you may end up doing is, you know, you may be making the lunchroom mess here and you may, be, you may lose a teacher over it somewhere. But yeah, I guess sorry, that's uh, the thing is like, you get to cut 500 grand, they get to decide where they cut it from. If they cut it at all. If they cut it at all. And by the way, if they also say like, you know, okay, well, you, I guess you're not getting any money back this year, Steve. Like, why do this? This is a fight you don't need to have for a reason you don't need to have it. Why have this fight? And why have it every year, Dan? Jeez. Uh, I, I don't believe it's every year. It's Sorry to interrupt. Shall we talk to Pete McMahon about that? I don't think it's every year. Yeah, it hasn't been every year. You're absolutely right about um, everything, almost everything you said. The, yeah, the, uh, I would be happy to give them that money. Um, I do think they waste it, but we don't have it. And that's the problem that I see is that we just don't have that much money. Uh, otherwise, yeah, they deserve every nickel they're asking for. But if we don't have the nickels. Oh, I'm not saying the contract they need to give everything, but. It's this that, you know, you're like, they're asking for this. Every, everybody's at, like, they're not asking for a whole lot this year. Okay. Don? Yeah, just one more thing. And I thought I heard Christine say this in the meeting, is that they were agreeing, at least on those revolving funds, to pay the overhead costs this year, which was something we asked them to do. Um, right, so, but they didn't... Uh... Although I, they didn't do it in a, in a number of them, right? So uh, Wakefield Academy, they did agree to cover health benefits. Uh, preschool, they didn't cover health benefits. School uh, Academy, 
didn't cover health benefits. Preschool, uh, there was a large budget offset. Uh, they don't know healthcare costs there either. So they picked it up in, in like one area, I think. School lunch, school lunch. School lunch. School lunch. And they only picked up half. When well, Steve, last year they picked up half. Well, yeah, but they hadn't agreed to pick up the whole yet for this coming budget either, was my understanding. I think it was half still. They just got that number this past week. So they did, they covered what Steve went in and asked for at the half year mark. They're, they're potentially covering what Steve asked for for this year mark, but not more than that, Don. Just so okay. That. Anybody else? Will you or, be asking? And do you have it? Uh, Kevin already sent it over, so we're asking. Yeah. We're asking yeah. is that number not for public consumption? Or is like, there like a total number? Yeah. Or school lunch. I think they gave 120, 1. 2, 125,000 lunch. Yeah. It was half of what we were asking for. Right. To cover the school lunch people's health care. Yes. Right. And the argument, the argument I'm getting back is, well, we don't know what lunch we're going to sell. Kind of playing with you, what you're saying. We don't know how many lunches we're going to sell. We don't know the cost of food. And I'm saying. But if the state, that's like any revolving account. Yeah. Right. If the state, yeah. if the state doesn't do free lunches, less people get free lunch. You need less food. You need less people. Yeah, yeah I had the same it. argument with yeah. them at, at one of the yeah. subcommittees. I was like, please, you know, the state's going to fully fund it, it, it whatever it, the fully fund needs to be. Right. You know, unless there's a change in the certain people that run the government. But anyway, so you said heads, hands up. Yep. Sorry, you want to make you see, he did, what was the number again? I'm sorry. 114, and, okay. and they gave us 17 last year. Yep. Sorry, last year. Was it 114 they last year? They gave us 114 looking for two something, I thought. They gave us half of whatever it was. And yeah. so this year we're asking for, I just didn't write it. It was just under 200. Yeah. I, think, close. I think it was yeah. like 196. Okay, that's fine. Yep. Thank you. Ed. Well, my point is they can cover many more administrative costs if they so cho chose to do so with the revolving funds. but. My question is, you know, just getting back to the point that was raised by Dennis, uh, the potential turn back at end of fiscal year. I don't know if that's been analyzed. I don't know what their spend patterns are this year. But one thing that school departments can legally do here in Massachusetts, and the legislature has given them that power, is to prepay special ed tuition. In other words, we could look at it another way. You'd sacrifice some free cash, but they could reduce their appropriation if they were to prepay in this fiscal year some special ed tuitions in the next fiscal year. So, Kevin, I don't know if you're aware of that. Yeah, you're probably aware of that. Yeah. You don't know if they yes. do that here in Wakefield or yeah. whatnot, but that's a technique they do. I, they do. I'm they using do. here in, in Somerville. <laughs> I'm forcing much, them to do that. They did it last year, Kevin. How much did they prepay on the spend last year? Was it 400000 Yeah, that rings, that, that rings about. Right. Yeah, I think it was about 400000 they prepaid last year to this year. Well, I mean, and that's a way if they if they've got that ability, that's a way to reduce the fiscal two oh two five appropriation, assuming they're turning back a lot of money in this fiscal year. Right. And I will say that that has been done, you know, higher numbers, different years. Uh, but they still come in with a budget number that some people here think is too high, even though they're doing that. Ed. Right. Yep. OK. I just want to make that point. Yeah. Yep. No. Nope. Thank you. Uh, I was going to look it up, but again, uh, the financials are usually in the uh, last meeting of each month for the school department or the first meeting of the next month. They have a school or uh, actual dollar spend e each month for the uh, the school committee. So it's available on the website. I don't have it in front of me. Anybody else? I found, I found the numbers from my last year's work. Yep. Unused aid in 21 and 22 is about a hundred million dollars, uh, one million dollars. Carryover limited to 1.7 million for fiscal year 23. So there's probably still some carryover there. Is that special need? Aid, not aid. Yep. Uh, other aid, not sped. Yep. Sped stabilization account um, was 308,000. I think that's exactly the same. So they do have that. But the unused carryover for sped cost was 1.6 million. In 22 and 1.7 million in 23, so I would expect unused sped costs for 24 is going to be somewhere north of a million dollars. Because I haven't heard anything about uh, high costs on special ed uh, for them for this year. I think. No, the yes. four, 
the forecasting um, for next year, I don't think they were aware of anything uh, out normal yet. They will continue to try to manage in-house versus externally because of costs. With yeah. yeah. So yeah. So the the aid was one point six, one point seven million. Right. And by the way, they could take this money out of the school loan. They totally could get the money from there. But again, what I always say is, all we have the ability to do is you know do the five hundred thousand dollar cut. They get to choose where they take it from, and you. You know, if you're them and you want that five hundred thousand, then you make it like you know a public and painful place. Um, and their history has been when they had to cut. I remember when I was chairman and we cut a million dollars out of their uh, ask, and they took it out of um, computers. Right. Yeah. They. They. I mean. So that's that. But that was also that was. Right before I, it was like fifteen years ago. Yeah, before I got on. that's two thousand eight when everything really hit the fan. Okay. So, any other comments, discussions? The motion before you is for an amendment, a five hundred thousand dollar reduction for the school budget. The new numbers would be one million. Uh, yeah, fifty one million. Eight nine nine six nine nine. One hundred fifteen thousand from the uh, available funds. And the tax levy would be fifty one thousand nine thirty four six ninety nine. Got it backwards. Sorry. So the, so the tax, the total, the total is fifty one thousand nine thirty million. Sorry, fifty one million nine thirty four six ninety nine. Yep. Tax levy would be uh, fifty one million eight nineteen six ninety nine. And 115,000 from the uh, bus fees. Bus fees or available funds. You got it. I think this one you need to do a roll call. Yeah. <laughs> I <didn't> think so. <laughs> so this one we will do a roll call for. So uh, the motion again is to reduce 500,000 school budget. Ed Bean? Yes. Joe Bertrand? Yes. Doug Butler? No. Stefan Chase? No. What, what did you say, Stefan? He said no. No? No. Thank you. Ryan's not here. Amy? Yes. Dennis? Yes. Tere? No. Evan Kenny? Yes. Don? No. Dan? Yes. Jim Sullivan? No. Laurie Wheeler? Yes. Ellie? Yes. We have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven yeses. One, two, three, four, five noes. I think it's eight yeses. I'm sorry. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight yeses. And one, two, three, four, five noes. So the motion carries. We go back to the uh, main budget, or we don't have to. Yeah, you do. I think you do. I think. I think you. You are the way you you framed the motion was you created a new budget, yeah, right? Mr. You read it out, so I think you're set. Evan. Yeah, Mr. Chairman, I, I I believe the correct procedure here is now that we've amended the main motion, we go back to the main motion as amended, and we have to do a roll call on that one. Okay. Except that he did name the new numbers. But I'm happy to vote again to make it to, sure. to be a, it's not going to change. I, I, I could be wrong. Yeah. I just yeah. that, that would be standard Robert's rules, but I don't know how you how you guys want to do it. If it if that suffice, then that sufficed. Have another one just to make sure. Sure. All right, we're going to go back to the main uh, main budget uh, main motion uh, for the school committee, and the uh, bu budget before you is for uh, fifty one million nine hundred thirty four thousand six hundred ninety nine. The total budget with uh, fifty one million eight nineteen six ninety nine from tax levy and one hundred fifteen thousand from school bus funds. All those in favor of those numbers, Ed Bean. Yes, Mr. Chairman. Point of information. Sorry, is this yep. is this the amended number? Is this Dan's number? Yes. Okay. The amended amount, Dan's numbers. Is that clear? Ed Bean was a yes. Joe? Yes. Doug Butler? No. No? 
No. Stefan. No. Uh, Amy. Yes. Dennis Hogan. Yes. Theray. No. Joe. Uh, Evan. Yes. Dawn. No. Dan. Yes. Jim Sullivan. No. Lori. Yes. I mean, I, oh my God. I zoned up for a second. Yeah. It's yes to Dan's number. Sorry. <laughs> Ellie. Yes. yes. Sorry. The votes did not change. Eight yeses, five noes. The FinCom recommendation will be for a different number than was uh, presented in the original. Okay. Thank you all for that. And moving on, Joe. Ready? I move for the library one million nine hundred seventy-two thousand eight hundred eighty-three dollars with one million nine hundred twenty thousand eight hundred thirteen dollars from tax levy, and fifty-two thousand and seventy dollars from the library trust fund. Second, seconded by Dan. Discussion on the library. Motion before you for the library budget is uh, one point nine. 0813 with uh, 1.972833. All right. Total budget amount is uh, 1,972,833 with 1,920,813 from tax levy, $52,070 from the Library Trust Fund. All those in favor? Right. Anyone opposed? Yes. Go ahead. For the vocational schools, I met a move for two million five hundred fifty-eight thousand four hundred and eighty-five dollars. Second, Fred's getting smaller from tax <laughs> levy. Seconded by Dan. Discussion on the voc school. So that number went up quite a bit from last year, and that was attributed to construction. Yeah, okay. the debt service. Out okay. of the, the debt service, right? Right. Continuation of it. Contagious. Oh, yes. <laughs> okay. Any discussion? All those in favor of the uh, motion before you for the Vogue School total amount of two million five hundred fifty-five thousand four hundred eighty-five dollars. Five fifty-eight. Two million five fifty-eight. Two million five fifty-eight four eighty-five. With all of that coming from tax levy. Aye. Aye. Anyone opposed? None. You. Uh, from uh, unclassified, I moved the sum of two million seven hundred sixty nine thousand four hundred sixty seven dollars with tax levy in the amount of two hundred two million two hundred ten thousand two hundred fifty one dollars, and from available funds five hundred fifty nine thousand two hundred sixteen dollars from cable TV fees. Second. Seconded by Dan. Discussion. Motion before you for the unclassified total amount of uh, two million seven hundred seven hundred sixty nine thousand four hundred sixty seven, with two million two hundred ten thousand two fifty one coming from tax levy, and five hundred ninety nine thousand two hundred sixteen coming from the table cable TV funds fees. All those in favor? Anyone opposed? Two. For total benefits and administration, I move the sum of twenty million six hundred seventy thousand two hundred nine dollars from tax levy. Seconded by Dan. Discussion. This is the area where we had the additional personnel. Yes, one additional person in group health insurance. Being no discussion, the motion before you is for a total benefits and administration total amount of thirteen million four hundred fifty-five and ninety-four dollars. Oh, no, it's the twenty thousand. Twenty million. Jesus, getting late. <laughs> twenty million. No, it's getting thinner, smaller. <laughs> twenty million six hundred seventy thousand two hundred nine dollars, and all of that coming from tax levy. Twenty million six hundred seventy two hundred nine dollars. All those in favor? Any, anyone opposed? Go ahead. For the uh, total MLD benefits, I move the sum of two million 
$692,933 from available funds for, ins for insurance, retirement, and workers' compensation. Second. Seconded by Dan, any discussion? Motion before you for the MLD benefits is $2,692,933 coming from the insurance plan and work this fall. For those of you that are new, this is um, money that is charged to the light department personnel for their benefits, um, for both what goes into the pension account because they're in our pension system, um, they're in our insurance system and workers' comp system. So that comes out of the light department's fees, not tax levels. So. We voted separately at town meeting. Very good. All those in favor? All right. All right. Anyone opposed? Motion carries. That's it for budgets, correct? For you budgets. need a total, Steve? Um, Articles. Uh, okay. I think, yeah, um, yeah, I guess so. It All doesn't right. hurt. I moved the sum of $127,826,069 with a hundred. Uh, Joe, no, uh, Joe, I think you guys might want to pull 500000 out of that. Oh, yeah, you're right. Wait okay. a minute. We, 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 I moved the sum of $127,000. We don't use the, uh, hold on. Oh, Joe, you don't need to. We, it all adds up. We don't okay. usually vote on the yeah. grand total. We don't, vote on all right. grand we don't total. need to do the total then. No, because you're going to get up at each individual spot. All right. Anyway, yeah. It is when it's full. Yeah. Just let's jump to articles, Joe. Yep. Articles next. The capital outlay. Yep. Print's even smaller. <laughs> <laughs> I moved the sum from tax levy of $2,051,816 from tax levy. From the Water Enterprise Fund, two hundred and fifty-four thousand, and from the Sewer Enterprise Fund, three hundred and ninety thousand, all per capital outlay. Second. Second by Dan. Any discussion? First article, capital outlay. The total is uh, two million fifty-one thousand eight hundred sixteen dollars with uh, water, two hundred fifty-four thousand, and sewer, three hundred ninety thousand. I thought we had cut this from the low retained earnings. Hadn't we? Had we cut this? I thought this there was is no. claiming that we this is the cut. We, uh, this is the cut number. Okay. So this is this the is number. up around two point two. It was two point two five. Yeah. Right. Okay. Right. All right. Right. Correct, correct, Joe? Yeah. It was like a two point two something and then we cut it to Steve cut it to two point five. How do we get such an odd 000. number? Like the yeah, things add up. Nice rounding up. It, okay. it, it was literally odd as as a member of Joe's subcommittee. Like if they they to their credit, they do them all. The item cost X. That's what's in the budget. So and they're pricing out vehicles and the like. They yeah. priced it out to like. Two so we used to do it as like two million so or one point eight or whatever. For, to make it clear, two point one million was in twenty three. Two two four zero was twenty four. And this is two oh five two. So there's a reduction almost of one hundred ninety thousand. Right, and they were able to actually get for some of these things the actual cost. Well, yes. That's why yeah. it's yeah. an oh, odd okay. number. They have like a vehicle. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so the capital outlay as described. Any other discussion? <laughs> All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Anyone opposed? None. All right, for the debt service fund, the amount of $5,359,880 with 3,283,523 exempt and 2,076,357 from non-exempt. Second. Seconded by Dan, any discussion? All those in favor of the debt service amount of $5,359,880 as described? All good. Anyone opposed? For the M WMGLD pilot, <clears throat> I moved the sum of $974,415 from the MLD receipts. Okay. Seconded by Dan. Any discussion on that? 
Did I amend that and add five hundred thousand to it? <laughs> I would, I would, uh, I would second it. <laughs> Third, <laughs> it, it is a whopping one point five percent up above last year. How long is that going to last? The one point five. I, 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 I lost that battle with this Vincom years ago on this. So is it not <laughs> <possible> <laughs> math for like four four percent? Like we go up four, they go yeah. up four. I think it's, I think it's another year or two. I think it's 2026. Is the yeah, last. they renewed it not too long ago. Yeah, continue five years. I think. Yeah, I remember so every every public utility essentially pays out. I don't know, twenty five, be somewhere between twenty five and sixty percent of their earnings every year as a dividend to their shareholders, of which WMGLD has one. <laughs> Stefan has the same. Stefan. Um, actually, I was just going to ask about that. Um, is that a true uh, figure, uh, Doug? It's a ballpark of what utilities pay out. Like the payout uh, ratio question, for utilities is. <clears throat> another question I had too. Um, I guess if if our tax levy max increase year over year is uh, two point five percent, wouldn't it make sense for this number also to go up two point five percent? One might think that, <laughs> like, uh, like the school department, this this body has a board, and they answer to the board, I believe. Correct? They do. So, um, I'm just going to have Kevin not pay for the street lights. <laughs> the lights would go out. Look at us, 188 grand back. <laughs> You guys would be freezing and in the dark. <laughs> I know. I, I would be my house right now. Why, why is all your <laughs> All right. All those, the uh, motion before you is for the Wakefield Municipal Gas and Light Department pilot amount of $974,415 coming from their receipts. All those in favor? Aye. Anyone opposed? No. Go ahead. For the police and fire indemnification, I moved the sum of eighty thousand dollars, which is twenty five thousand for police and fifty five thousand dollars for the fire department. And that's from free cash. If you might want to from just free change cash. It. I'm sorry. Yeah. Thank you. Sorry about that. Second and Dan. Yeah. Discussion on that. Police and fire indemnification before you then is for eighty thousand dollars to be taken out of free cash. All those in favor? Anyone opposed? Unanimous. Thank you. For supplemental appropriations, I move the sum of three hundred fifty thousand dollars from free cash for the fire department, three hundred twenty-five thousand salaries, and twenty-five thousand dollars for expenses. Second. Okay. Seconded by Dan. Discussion on the supplemental. Yeah, I have one question. This is Stephen Kevin question. So I don't have. I have this article in here, and I have it in here, and I don't have it going up going forward for the fire department. So the three hundred. I mean, every year we get hit with a supplemental reserve fund transfer for the fire department. This is a really big one; it hasn't been this right. big in a while. But my concern is, I'm not projecting this into the future. And I thought I heard something about you didn't think it was going to be as big and beyond twenty five, but maybe I misheard that. So are we going to keep? Is that a, like a wishful thinking in my dreams? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I telepathically send I mean, it to you. It's, if it's going to keep coming up every single year and we keep putting a supplemental, I should put in an, an article for 300 grand every year into the future. Well, um, for the fire department. My own, I, I have two thoughts on that. A, we have a better, younger, not a better, a younger, more fit fire department. So that does help with injuries and things like that. Um, we did have a few major um, injuries and in retirement this year that came out of the blue that did add um, to that number. It's also free, and we don't use the reserve fund as much. So, you know, we could wait and throw this in the reserve fund. Uh, that's it's, yeah. it's money we spend. So that's money coming back from reserve funds. So it, we spend it regardless. I would say maybe put it in your notes at this point. We, we did an increase all, to overtime. We also. did an increase to overtime. 50, in 50,000. 50, 50, is this in overtime or is this? Most of it's overtime. Or is this retirees who are collecting? Well, their maybe. Pays, pays, it, but it's, it's mainly it, overtime. It's basically okay. injuries. So you follow my concern. Yeah. I'm, not, I'm not accounting for this number in yeah. the future. I'm saying this is a zero in 26. And it doesn't sound like it's going to be. Oh, it, wishful okay. thinking it would. It could be. It could be. It could be. Yeah. Has it ever, wouldn't it, uh, would, doesn't it belong in the, uh, in the actual budget? Well we, well, we added. We've moved it into the budget a little bit, but not enough. No, and it, it, well, we, we probably weren't going to move that 
and the safer grant in the same year. I guess it would have been 601. Except we needed that for this year's number. This year's budget, not last year's. I think it's something to look at, Dan, and I'm, I'm hopeful it will go down. Um, they're fitter, they're younger, they're, you know, it makes a difference. Well, I'm just, you know, just curiosity is looking at um, the history of reserve fund transfers for the fire department. If I can get to the right page. Oh, it's been there. Yeah, several years. Yeah. Oh, yeah, but it oh, hasn't been in I don't, it's several, you mean 15. I don't get, I don't get the, re, I don't get the history. It's not on your spreadsheet, Kevin. Yeah. All right. Ed, Ed Beans. Hands up. Oh, well, fire departments were really uh, hit hard under COVID because of, they work in close quarters. So just about every fire department had extraordinary overtime during the COVID years as, as well. But uh, again, I, you know, Steve says, you know, a, a younger, fitter fire department does make a difference. So, you know, I, I think you'll have a good chance of it going down. Okay. I found it. 100,000 in 2021, 120,000 in 2022 on your spreadsheet. But we didn't do anything for 23. Maybe not. We used DARPA, I think. Yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah. We used DARPA. That's where it went. All right. That's a twice and three times the norm. Ouch. Yeah. It used to be that. Probably we used to, have, we used to not have a hand in there. It may, uh, I may have to go back for the, like 19, 18, something like that. All right. Motion before you then is for supplemental appropriations from free cash in the amount of $350,000. All those in favor? Aye. Anyone opposed? Uh, Unanimous. I move the sum of, of the very large number of $1 from tax levy for eminent domain. Second. Seconded by Dan. Discussion? All those in favor, I'm in a domain $1 from tax levy. Aye. Aye. Thank you. For trash collection, I move the sum of $2,456,958 from tax levy. Second. Seconded by Dan, discussion on trash. Total log of a trash collection is $2,456,958, all from tax levy. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? One opposed. I move the sum of, of $5 million for water main replacement, uh, borrowing the amount of $5 million. Second. Second by Dan. Any discussion on the water main replacement? Is it going to improve the roads? <laughs> well, the roads are done after it. After it. I can't even get out of Greenwood right now. It's, it's crazy. Yes, wait. I figured you get two of North Ave as well. <laughs> yeah, two, of those, two or three of those emails a day, I thought I'd oh. ask. All those in favor of the uh, motion before you for water main replacement, which is a borrowing for $5 million. All right. Anyone opposed? I'll be out of the enterprise account, so. Okay. I want to thank you, Dave. I said, I want to thank you, Dave. Thank you, Dave. Who's you can mute, Don. <clears throat> Anybody hear me? Oh. <laughs> All right. I right. move. Go ahead. Thank uh, you. Sorry. Building the island design. <laughs> I move the sum of $150,000 from tax levy. Second. Second about Dan discussion. What's this? I don't remember. So, Go ahead. Yeah, this is uh, the, um, at the DPW, well, it's really looking to where would we put a uh, town fuel you know, gas station, diesel, uh, gas, and I think I believe diesel, yeah. either at the existing site, which we want to have, be able to dis dislocate it and move it if we move to another site with the DPW barn or somewhere else, um, because those islands are very old and we're very fearful that we'll have a problem. <laughs> so this, I think, is engineering and yeah. uh, design yeah. Yeah. for uh, a new fuel island at some location. Yeah. Oh, it's not, it's not, we're not thinking of doing it at the current location, or we might do it. We might do it there. Either or. Either, Either or. or, but it's more just, it's not, we're right. not funding this one that then we're going to move and be like a. Correct. Throughout the 150. No. Engineering and evaluation. Yeah. From the DPW, how it was described. 
Motion before you then is for the fuel island design of $150,000 from tax levy for the article. All those in favor? Aye. Anyone opposed? Duke? I have a question before we wrap up. One more. Yeah, one, one more. Wally's. I have the old sheet. The right of way Wally's been. I moved the sum of $1 from tax levy. Oh, second that. Second. Mm -hmm. Done by Dan. Go ahead. Any discussion on the wall easement? That's on Greenwood, uh, corner of Greenwood and Hickory Hill. Um, uh, when the developer came in to put a lot at the end of Hickory Hill, uh, the, the town engineer commented on the application and said, you know, we might want to put a sidewalk there some someday. We might need to take some land. Might as well get it now without any issues. So we may never do anything, but we will have the easement if we do. Want to do a sidewalk there? Maybe that'll help Dan get out of Greenwood. Oh. <laughs> We're doing everything we can, Joe. <laughs> <laughs> Motion before you is for the uh, right of way wall easement, uh, one dollar from tax levy. All those in favor? Anyone opposed? Okay, now, I, now my question. That completes the voting, correct? Articles. Well, that that's my question. Um, in the past, haven't we voted on? Where we had like senior tax credits, and we get it, we gets presented to us. Isn't there a motion this year? No. On any of the articles, nothing regarding senior tax. Uh, you mean the, the senior tax credit program? Yeah. Uh, that we we put up for another three years, I think, last year. Oh, so we don't have to vote. We don't have to vote on it every year. No. So it's okay. All right. Cool. Yeah. Um, if I may, Mr. Chairman, just want a couple things to yep. make comments. The, yep. Um, the uh, finance committee aware of. Um, there is a citizen article, um, which there's no dollar amount added to. Um, so it's not in front of this, this finance committee and it wouldn't happen anyway in this fiscal year because of contractual issues. But there is a uh, one citizen article up that would like to have um, all trash picked up on the town's um, on uh, out of tax levy out of the town's contract um, for units, um, for condos and apartment buildings and things like that. It's a citizen petition. Um, that is certainly not something we are going to um, support from the town side. This, and it would take, it'd be a lot of um, negotiating with our current trash uh, hauler anyway, even if it passed, um, but there's no dollar amount. So there's no finance committee. I didn't want you to be blindsided if someone asked you about it. Um, there is uh, also a couple of articles that I was asked to bring to the finance committee, but after I talked to town council about it, I decided that that was not prudent. Um, they are articles 22 and 23, I believe on the warrant. Um, each one of them instructs the town administrator to send certified mail to our federal delegation um, one that states the town wants to basically um, not longer fund, no longer fund Israel um, um, and put, give aid to Gaza. <laughs> and the other one says that um, to fund extra money to Israel. Um, so they're kind of dueling articles at the end, both citizen petitions. Um, someone requested that, uh, I thought that should be in front of the finance committee because um, there is a cost to certified mail. Um, however, um, that dollar cost is not in the article. Number one, there's no cost attached to it. Um, number two, in the town um, council budget, there is postage money available. So you've ostensibly already voted $250 postage. And number three, town meeting actually cannot instruct town administrator to do anything. Town council can. So it'll be interesting to see what happens, but that's not something that I would ask this count, this town, this finance committee to take position on over thirty dollar cost of a Thank certified you. letter. Thank you, sir. So, um, <laughs> I think that's it. <laughs> well, sure. <laughs> <laughs> no, yeah, I, I could see Jim and Tom uh, Holland said it should be. Trying to figure that one out. Yeah. How are you going to handle this one, Jim? Yeah. 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 Uh, finance. How many green cards do we need? Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. Um, and if I have one more thing, um, Joe, are you still there? Unfortunately, yes. um, I did it. I did um, attend a um, seminar on the Inflation Reduction Act that talked about um, uh, um, 
electric charging stations yep. and tax credits and the like. So I'll follow up with you on that right. um, to see there may be some money there for us. To right. Help out the that's, that's for, for everyone's information. That's related to the, to the new high school, the inflation reduction act. When I read it, it actually made an actual reference specifically to electric ch uh, charging stations at schools. Uh, so that there's some, hopefully we can get some money for that for the new uh, high school since we have to comply with the new energy codes and have to put in gazillion electric chargers. Uh, question okay. on that Go ahead. the garbage thing. Um, if the MBTA Act passes, what is it? like? Do we pick up trash for units with four? We do. Okay, so then, so that wouldn't change it. That wouldn't change it. Okay. So how many? What well, would be more tonnage? But that could have be more tonnage. Yeah. Right? Following up on that, so do we have any idea how much additional tonnage we'd have if this would go through? DPW will have something, and it is huge. Okay. Oh. If it goes through and everybody builds a floor flat on there, 4,000 yeah. square feet. No, not, not even that. I'm talking about the actual article. If uh, it went through for all the apartments. Oh, for the, all the apartments, it'd be right. enormous. The enormous. I mean, think of Heron Pond. Think of, um, you know, 200 corner power. Think of Grayson Loft. Think of all these new apartment buildings that are built. Is the article for all apartments and condos? And all, everything. Yeah. Everything. Yeah. Even, even private businesses? Residential. Residential. <clears throat> can we change tax rates on condos then? Or can we change tax rates on multifamily, multi unit? I think it's either commercial or residential. I don't think, I mean, it would be in the assessment. Yeah, I just don't know if there's are, do those fall under, where do they fall? Commercial or residential? Residential. 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 I don't see it if it squeeze everybody. An interesting poll. Yeah, I'll give you a huge. <laughs> yep. Any other comments from folks on the committee? Seeing none. Go ahead, I'll wait for what you're looking for. Um, you might want to do the minutes for the last meeting while I'm yep. filling that. Yep, the minutes. There's one set of minutes uh, to review. And those are the minutes from the uh, April 11th meeting. They're on Govenda. I contain a motion for the minutes from uh, April 11th. I move. So moved by Dan, seconded. Second. Thank you. And discussion on the minutes from April 11, 2024. All those in favor of those minutes from the Finance Committee, April 11, 2024. Aye. Aye. Anyone opposed? Any other committee comments? Question for Mr. Gill. Uh, any idea what we might be looking at in our June meeting for a reserve fund transfer at this point? Well, he's thinking I have one for you. The, the uh, posting of the town warrant in the Wakefield daily item. I'm gonna, I'm gonna need one because it was four pages long, and I'm bet, and then that's gonna. I mean, unless we can move some money around, we may need twenty grand <laughs> for that. Four pages and because four pages. of the MBTA thing. Well, the zoning one's a long. Yeah, yeah. You yeah. can't even read it. That's that's not what the law says. The law says we need to post it. So if they made it six pages, it would be more. <laughs> Yeah, you need money. Sorry, you need money for that. What say? What, 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 we need to. We we have a budget for posting of warrants for town meetings, and things like that. Where it's so big, it's like double what yeah, anything. Yeah, yeah. I got it. Thanks. Yeah. Uh, reserve fund transfers, I, I would think, would be in line with what was done last year. I, I would think it would come in under two hundred thousand. Um, you know, small ones, ten thousand maybe from. Medicare, uh, there's been a couple of retirements early in the year. So the buyouts mm -hmm. uh, for those people uh, of sick time. Um, the only other item is um, an overage in unemployment, but the school should pick that up because we budget 75,000 25 for the towns, 50 for the school. If the school goes over the 50,000, they pick it up out of their budget. Um, they, there was a lot of fraud or whatnot that we, we've been going through the bills 
Um, and right now, I, I think it was, we're over like 62,000 um, and it's all school related for. All right, so nothing. Outrageous. Nothing huge. Good, thank you. Do I get Go, Joe, Joe, yes. Yeah. When the Capital Outlay Committee met, the um, um, the lights in the um, over in I think it was near the hotel. Uh, there was some immediate work that had to be done, and we suggested that they go to res get a reserve fund transfer on that. Did they do so? Do you know? Was asking. It'll be Randy Hudson. Uh, yeah. Randy did. Randy did mention that. He's got to overspend um, right now. He, he did submit some bills this week. It, his budget is about four thousand dollars over budget, um, and he said he may have a couple more bills coming in. So, um, fire alarm, street light bill uh, will be one of the items for reserve okay. budget. Yeah, because it had to be done immediately, and they were looking to put it on the capital outlay, and we told them that doesn't start until right. July. <laughs> so yeah. You can't. You got to do something quicker than that. Okay, I just wanted to check to make sure he had done that. Thank yes, you. Yes, he did. Yes, he did. Okay. Ready for a motion to adjourn, sir? No other comments. I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. Second. Second by... you again, Evan. Ah. <laughs> Second by several. All right. Again, appreciate the attendance. Thank you, everybody. Input, activities. Thank you all. All those in favor, of motion to adjourn. All right. Anyone opposed? See you at town meeting. <laughs> <laughs>